Hello seniors, it's been a while and I hope you are all in good health for today's another discussion. So let us go on the journey of learning on the field of Philippine politics and governance. Brace yourselves and have a happy learning ahead. Civil Society and Social Movements This lesson examines the role of civil society and social movements which begin through an understanding of current theories of both civil society and social movements. Before we proceed with our topic, let us first look upon its content standard. The students must demonstrate an understanding of elections and political and civil society and social movements. For the performance standard, students must be able to analyze the interactions between state and society. For the most essential learning competency, students must be able to explain the concept, rule, and contributions of so civil society and social movements to the Philippine democracy. So let us proceed with our discussion. Concepts of Civil Society A civil society is comprised of groups or organizations working in the interest of citizens but operating outside of the governmental and for-profit sectors. They are known to champion issues of the marginalized members of the society, such as issues in poverty, environmental protection, human rights, labor rights. Organizations and institutions that make up civil society include labor unions, non-profit organizations, churches, and other service agencies that provide an important service to society but generally ask for very little in return. The United Nations refers to civil society as the third sector of the society, along with government and business. The civil society is considered a social sphere independent from both the state and the market. It comprises of civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations. The term civil society organizations or CSOs refers to those non-state, non-profit, voluntary organizations in this social sphere. Thus, CSOs include a wide array of organizations, networks, associations, groups, and movements that sometimes come together to push for the advancement of their common interests by means of collection action. Non-governmental organizations, on the other hand, are non-profit and voluntary citizen groups, which are organized on a local, national, or international level. They perform service and humanitarian rules, bring citizen concerns to governments, advocate and monitor policies, and encourage participation through information dissemination. Similarly, they provide analysis and expertise on specific issues on the environment, health, and even on human rights. Let us talk about the key characteristics of successful civil societies. The first one is that separated from the state and the market. Followed by it is formed by people who have common needs, interests, and values. Lastly, it is developed through a fundamentally endogenous process that is not easily controlled from the outside. The civil society can have a positive influence on both the state and the market. The civil society has become increasingly important in the promotion of good governance, effectiveness, and accountability. Rule of civil society in good governance It includes key agent in policy analysis and advocacy. 
It regulates and monitors state performance and behavior of policy officials. Builds social capital and enables citizens to identify and articulate their beliefs, values, and ideas. Mobilizes particular in development work to improve the well-being of its own and other communities. Let us look upon the types of civil society organization. CSOs take a variety of forms. Nonetheless, here are the list of five main types of CSOs and two hybrid organizations which are civil organizations but are not completely separated from states or business lists presents a good categorization of CSOs. The first type of civil society are those religious civil society organizations. They do not necessarily promote worship or less link to a given religion and they act following a religious precept. Their fields of intervention include education, health, emergency relief, and basic needs assistance, a good example of which is Philippine Red Cross. The second type of civil society are those community-based civil society organizations. Local CSOs are based on solidarity, resource sharing, and community building. They are primarily focused on the development, housing, social services, civil and legal assistance, as well as in culture and creation. Philanthropic Civil Society Organization These are organizations that serve a cause without any religious affiliation. They are based on values such as generosity and humanism. They include private and business foundations and independent NGOs. Expert Civil Society Organization they act in new field that requires some scientific knowledge. They are not exclusively composed of experts and scientists, but they claim to have an expertise unit and they publish some technical reports. Business Civil Society Organizations these include business and industry NGOs which defend a given firm's or industry's interest. Larger corporations often have lobbyists who will monitor and promote various laws and programs for the specific interests of the corporation. Companies and organizations also come together in larger groups to work for general business interests. There are also business lobby groups in the Philippines, such as those in the sugar and tobacco industries. Government-Oriented Civil Society Organization These are independent civil organizations which are influenced and controlled by national authorities. These are developed in industrialized Asian countries, particularly in China. Trade Unions These are organizations whose membership consists of workers and union leaders united to protect and promote their common interests. The Philippines is home to trade unions. The Trade Union Congress of the Philippines is the biggest confederation of labor federations in the country, with almost 30 federations representative of sectors and industries from agriculture to manufacturing services. Functions and Contributions of Civil Organizations Civil organizations is crucial to democratization. It enables and widens participation, protects citizens from the abuse of state power, 
guarantees the political accountability of the state, civil society organizations can be protectors and guardians, change advocates, dispensers and generators of social wealth and welfare. So here are the functions and contributions of civil organizations. Protection of citizens. This basic function of civil society consists of protecting lives, freedom, and property against attacks and despotism by the state or other authorities. Monitoring for accountability. This function consists mainly in monitoring the activities of the central powers, state apparatus, and government. This is also a way of controlling central authorities and holding them to account. Monitoring can refer to various issues such as human rights, public spending, corruption, and even primary schools enrollments. The function is based on Montesquieu's separation of powers, but is enhanced by development cooperation perspectives. Advocacy and public communication Civil society has an important task to articulate interests, especially marginalized groups and to create channels of communication to bring them to the public agenda, thus raising public awareness and debating them. In development cooperation, this Habermasian function is mainly described as advocacy. Socialization With its rich associational life, civil society contributes to the formation and practice of democratic attitudes among citizens. Thus, people learn to develop tolerance, mutual trust, and the ability to find compromise by democratic procedures. Thus, democracy is ensured not only by legal institutions but by citizens' habits. Building Community Engagement and participation in voluntary associations also has the potential to strengthen bonds among citizens. For example, building social capital. In cases where the associations include members from other ethnic or social groups, it also bridges social cleavages and adds to social cohesion. Intermediation and facilitation between citizen and state Civil society and its organizations fulfill the role of balancing the power of an and negotiating with the state by establishing diverse relations, for example, communication, negotiation and control of various interest groups or independent institutions to the state. This rule goes mainly back to Montesquieu. Service delivery The direct provision of services to the citizens forms an important part of the activities of civil society associations, for example, self-help or groups. Especially in cases where the state is weak, it becomes a basic activity to provide shelter, health, or even education. Concepts of Social Movement Philippine politics and the struggle for genuine social change are best demonstrated through the country's social movements. Social movements have been making mark in our history since the colonial period up to the present time. Many social scientists have defined social movement in different contexts but all of them states that social movements are groups meant to bring social change. Social movements are defined as a sustained and purposeful collective mobilized by an identifiable, self-organized group in confrontation with specific power structures and in the pursuit of socio-economic and political change. Social movement is a collective body that has a high level of commitment and political activism and is not necessarily based on formal organization. Social movements are attempts to change society through collective action. They transpire when large groups of individuals or organizations work for or against change in specific political or social contexts. 
They are non-institutionalized because just like CSOs, they occur outside of governmental institutions. Social movements are collective enterprises to establish a new order of life. Social movements are collectivity which acts with some continuity to promote or resist a change in the society or group of which it is a part. Social movements are called social because they intend to bring about change in the society and movement because they have the capacity to mobilize or organize people with common interests and goals. There are four stages of social movements. This include the following. Emergence, coalescence, bureaucratization, and decline. So let us look for these four stages of social movements one by one. Emergence. Within this stage, Social movements are very preliminary and there is little to no organization. Instead, this stage can be thought of as a widespread discontent. This early stage can also be considered within a specific social movement organization. A social movement organization is an organization that is or has been associated with a social movement which carries out the tasks that are necessary for any social movement to survive and be successful. Coalescence This stage is also known as popular stage and is characterized by a more clearly defined sense of discontent. At this stage in the life cycle, Social movements have overcome some obstacles which many never overcome. Social unrest or discontent passes without any organizing or widespread mobilization. It is no longer just a general sense of unease but now a sense of what the unease is about and who or what is responsible. The third one is bureaucratization. During this stage, social movements have had some success in they have raised awareness to a coordinated strategy is necessary across all the social movement organizations. Social movements can no longer just rely on mass rallies or inspirational leaders to progress towards their goals and build constituencies. They must rely on trained staff to carry out the functions of organizations. And the last stage is decline. This does not necessarily mean failure for social movements. There are four ways in which social movements can decrease, namely success, organized failure, co-optation, and repression. In success, many social movements have goals that are much less clearly defined and many organize new campaigns once others are wrapping up either through success or compromise. For organized failure, they usually occurs when there are strategical failures in the movement. And for co-optation, this occurs when movement leaders come to associate with authorities or movement targets more than with the social movement constituents. And lastly, for repression, this occurs when authorities or agents acting on behalf of the authorities use measures to control or destroy a social movement. Do you have any questions? If you have one, you may comment down below or you may send your questions to your teachers for clarifications. Guess it's time to say goodbye for now, my dear learners. See you next time.